Hey guys, Cameron with CBM Reviews here, and I'm here to give you the newest DC animated movie review, and it's going to be hard to keep it non-spoiler. This is the review of Superman, Man of Tomorrow. Superman, Man of Tomorrow was directed by Chris Palmer, and it stars Darren Chris as Clark Kent and Superman, but it also has Ryan Hurst as Lobo, Ike Amati as Martian Manhunter, as well as Brett Dalton as Parasite. I'm going to give you the story, the things I liked, the things I didn't like, and I'm going to try hard not to spoil this, so stay tuned. Before we get started, I just want to thank you guys for clicking on this video. It means so much to me. Do me a huge favor and hit that thumbs up button because it raises the visibility of this video. If you're a fan of this sort of thing, comic book movie reviews, sometimes I even do television reviews, click that subscribe button. And last but certainly not least, if you want to know as soon as I put anything up, hit that notification bell, you'll know as soon as I post. So this is the first DC animated movie that has come after Justice League Dark Apocalypse War, and it has nothing to do with that story, which if you remember my review, I was really upset at the end of it. Um, but this is a telling of Superman in a different way. Um, not necessarily the story or the origin is completely different, but they decided to take some liberties with his uh, Smallville raising, as well as his early days in Metropolis. He's an intern at the Daily Planet and he meets Lois Lane and he's on these stories and normal stuff happens until normal stuff doesn't happen. And as Superman, he has to figure out what his place is in the world, whether he should hide or become its champion, whether he should keep his identity a secret or tell the world who he is, you get the gist. So the first thing, the first thing that I noticed is the art style. It's completely different from any other DC animated art style that we've seen. This is like slightly more detailed Archer and I really could not not see the Archer style where there are small lines for details and then very broad lines for the outlines. But it just, it was different and I, at times it distracted and at other times it helped make the animation more fluid. So it was kind of like a double-edged sword for me. Lois Lane is really good. Uh, and, and some of you may not know this. I do not like Lois Lane as a character. Just there are things about her that frustrate me so. Those things that frustrate me are not present in this movie and I appreciate that so very much it makes me actually enjoy her character being a sensible character whereas normally Lois Lane will put herself in the most dangerous of situations because her Superman will save her but in this case she's her own woman and she's not gonna do something completely stupid yes she she'll go close for the story but she's not a moron and so I appreciated this Lois Lane immensely also, we have uh, a trio of aliens in this. This is not a spoiler, but there's Martian Manhunter and Lobo in this. And Lobo, of course, is a bounty hunter. Um, and Martian Manhunter is, well, he's a Martian, telepath, super strength. And I really enjoyed Martian Manhunter here. Um, how he sounded, how he moved in this really made me enjoy the character that much. And I wish that we could see more Martian Manhunter. I mean, I really didn't know much about the character before the Justice League cartoon back in the early 2000s. I really enjoyed the character after that. And this is not the first time we've seen some depiction in a way that I liked, but it's one of the few and I appreciated it. But I can't say the same for Lobo. I understand the character of Lobo. I, I understand, you know, he's this rough around the edges, you know, but they went to, hmm, I can't find the word, but campy is part of it and crass for crass sake. I understand, like, almost every line of profanity comes from Lobo. And if you're a Lobo fan and that's what you're there for, that's great. But there's another thing that I didn't like. The delivery left me wanting. There are so many pauses between words. There's no flow, if that makes sense. Lobo isn't 
smooth as far as the delivery of his words here. And maybe that's exactly what the voice director wanted. But I just, it, it, it really rubbed me. The, maybe I'm spoiled. Maybe Brad Garrett's Lobo from the Superman animated series and the Justice League series just was too good for, for me because that's who I'm going to measure every single Lobo to, live action or animated. If you aren't up to Brad Garrett's level, I'm going to be disappointed. And Ryan, I'm sure you did as great of a job as you were, you know, directed, but man, Brad Garrett's got it. Say it, say it. And the main villain in this is Parasite. Rudy Jones um, has an issue where it causes him to need to absorb other people's life essence or just energy in general. And that's a great villain that we really haven't seen explored in any of the animated movies. We've seen him once in All-Star Superman, but this is the first time where he's explored more in depth outside of the Superman animated series. To a point, I really enjoyed Parasite. To a point. And I said, I'm not spoiling this movie, but I need to talk about the third act. The first act where we're getting introduced to this version of Clark Kent, and the second act where he dons the role of Superman and he's starting to try and figure out where he belongs in the world. Those two acts are fine. They're not perfect, but they do their job introducing us to this version of this character. And then you've got Act 3. It's not just how it ends, but it's the entire Act 3. Superman does some things that I find highly questionable. The screenwriter or director chose a direction with Parasite that I wasn't particularly fond of. And if you're a fan of a certain movie monster, you may get a kick out of this, but I didn't. It just, that it, that's, that's just me. It's a personal preference. As far as part of the resolution of this story, there is a certain cartoon that just recently ended. And I can't say which one because it will spoil the movie. And the way that it ended was very cliche for that show. And a little anticlimactic. And this movie does that. Not beat for beat, but it does and it makes me groan. Um, yeah, so I don't know what to tell you guys without spoiling anything. Uh, I can give you the grade, and to be honest, the grade's gonna be a 55. The movie is not as strong as it wants to be. It wants to tell this very iconic story in a different light. And there are some moments that work and there are some moments that just aren't quite there. They don't grasp everything. You've got supporting characters that work amazing. John Jones, the Martian Manhunter. Jonathan Kent is really good in this. Perry White's a little J. Jonah Jameson-y for my taste, but technically he came first, so we'll give him that pass. But then you've got characters that, in my opinion, don't come off so great, like Lobo. And there are story aspects that I feel don't work, i.e. Act 3. Now, this is just my opinion. If you're a huge Superman fan, you may like this. If you're a Lobo fan, you might enjoy this because Lobo's not terrible. That's the thing. I, I just feel like his delivery was lacking. It's not all bad, though. You know, it's got some fun action pieces uh, in the first and second act. Uh, it's got some Batman references, you know, if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> but overall, it's a very meh experience. If this is something that you're interested in seeing, I'm going to be honest with you. I wait till it's on discount. So that's my review of Superman, Man of Tomorrow, and I didn't spoil it, I hope. <laughs>
Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel and share this with your friends. As always, this is Cameron with CBM Reviews. We'll see you next time.